Hello everybody, this is Boaz Feiler and this is a monthly forecast for the month of November 2016 for all the zodiac signs. We're talking about the celestial weather in the sky that affects all of us. So, what is happening in the sky? Right now in the sky there's a lot of scorpionic energy. And that scorpionic energy made us more introverted and it made us really go inside and check, check our inner pipelines and do a sort of a house cleaning. And the good news is that we're going, we're, we're getting out of that energy and into a more Sagittarian energy, which is much more uplifting, optimistic and adventurous. And there's nothing like feeling clean after a good energetic shower or emotional shower after we've been in Scorpio for a while. So what's happening in the sky? Mars is going to enter Aquarius at November, at, on November 9th. And when Mars are the planet of action, the planet of entrepreneurship, the planet of defense, the planet of war, the planet of action in charge of everything masculine within us, enters Aquarius, changes become much more rapid. We lose patience. We want to get ahead and get ahead fast. We want the change to happen. We don't have patience to wait for others, for society, for the systems, for other people in our life. And on the one hand, that could be a very positive time because we can fight for things we believe in. We can fight for humanistic endeavors, for social endeavors, for uh, ecological endeavors, and we can make personally positive changes in our life, stepping ahead to pl in places that we felt stuck in. The not so positive part about it is that, as I said, we don't have patience and we can become rebellious and throw away the baby with the bathwater and not be not acknowledge enough the good things we have right now in our life. So we need some common sense there. Venus is going to enter Capricorn in the 12th. And when Venus that is in charge on love, relationships, and the way we get satisfaction in our life and draw in monetary funds, goes into Capricorn, that's a maturity test. It brings out up issues. It brings up issues of maturity, responsibility, and basically reliability. Do we work in these subjects in a reliable fashion that actually produces good results on the ground? And if we do, we get strengthened in that time. And our base of operation grows and stabilizes so we can build upon it. But if there are things that are not working the way they should and are not backed up by real feasible proof, they can fall apart. And if not fall apart, be severely tested. And when Venus enters that realm, she becomes much more distant and cold and even shy Again, because she doesn't want to get caught saying or doing something that is unsupported. She wants things to be based in the firm ground of reality. Even though we're going to have a very serious Venus, Mercury, on the other hand, is gaining, is ingress, is moving into Sagittarius, I'm sorry, a day later which means that everything concerning our navigation, our thoughts, and our communication, our words, is going to become much more upbeat, adventurous, optimistic, and sort of happy-go-lucky. And we could flow into philosophical uh, debates much easier. And that's a good thing, because we would want our old way of navigation through life to be much more in correlation with the things we believe in, with our philosophy, with our truth. We just have to be careful not to become 
too opinionated and think that we're the owners of the truth and everybody else must be wrong. There's going to be a power and energy buildup from the 11th of the month till the 14th. The 14th is a full moon in Taurus and that weekend is going to be packed with energy. It's a great time for anything artistic. It's a great time for cooking, for gardening. It's a great time to just take care of your body or enjoy it sensually. It's a great time to enjoy the company of others as well. And just enjoy the fact that you are, um, you, your soul came into this material body and a material world. <laughs> And it's a great time to enjoy the natural world and nature as well. And this full moon is about understanding that in order to be truly satisfied and truly happy, we need to learn to make do with our own resources, with our own realm, being alone and being content. And once we are content drinking our own water, from our own hearts, we could really be happy with other people and with their resources and with their company and so on and so forth. So it's about living in peace with myself, with what I have, not with what I want to have or crave to have, with my sexuality and my loneliness and the fact that I might not have somebody to cuddle with tonight. It's about acknowledging what I already have, the little things around me. You remember the story about Ferdinand the bull that didn't care about fighting with others or chasing the cows, just wanted to sit in the middle of the grass meadow and smell the flowers. This is very much the energy of this full moon in Taurus. The sun is moving into Sagittarius on the 22nd, Happy birthday, you Sagittarians. This is going to contribute further to what I said before about Mercury, about the upbeat, adventurous, optimistic spirit that's going to sip into what we do and who we are. And again, <clears throat> bridging that gap between how we live in reality and what we believe in. We would want the gap to narrow as much as possible. And this could be an incentive to change things and to walk forward in our life. Mercury and Saturn are meeting and they are <clears throat> moving into a conjunction that's going to be at its height at the 23rd. And this is a time that we don't want to be caught saying anything that is unsupported, anything that is not established enough, that all our actions and our movement through life becomes much more focused on a reliable, stable and mature way of movement, of thinking and of communicating. Jupiter is going to square Pluto at the end of the month. The height is on the 24th and all through that time we could get this feeling that on the one hand we want to progress, that Jupiter is pushing us forward, saying, hey, come on, try new things. Step out of your comfort zone. Be adventurous. Believe in, in, in good. Believe, be optimistic enough to believe that positive change is possible. Walk the road. On the other hand, Pluto, Mr. Pluto is saying, hey, hey, wait a minute. You know, we have an emotional body here and we, we, we need to, um, <laughs> we need to, digest emotionally, you know, and it's like a pregnancy. We can't hurry it if you want that child to breathe on its own. And emotional, emotional uh, digestion takes a long time. So on the one hand, we have Jupiter moving us up, up and away. On the other hand, we have Pluto pulling us down, understanding what is happening within us, within our darkest cellars. So that could create a syndrome of moving between overconfidence and having no confidence whatsoever. And that's a very important time to keep a sound mind, a lot of logic, 
and a wide frame of a wide, a wide scope looking at the long-term effects of things and not letting in that emotional drama rule our life, making sure that our inner jungle, so to speak, is kept safe from blizzards and wildfires and firestorms that can happen with that aspect. We're lucky that Jupiter is going to be in beautiful angles to both Saturn and Mars that are going to both invigorate us and stabilize us at the same time, adding to the positive and lessening the negative. Venus is going to conjunct Pluto at around the 25th of the month. And during these days, that cold and distant Venus is going to wake up and want more and want it now. It is going to become much more carnal, much more desire, full of uh, much more full of desires. So anything concerning satisfaction, monetary funds, love and relationship is going to become much more extreme among these days. That could be great because we can go into depth or heights that can make us feel alive and, 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 uh, and feel like everything we're involved in is very authentic and real and that's great. But the same emotional depth can cause rage or sorrow or even make us cruel with how we act within relationships and we have to watch that and make sure it doesn't happen. Other than that, at the end of the month, 29th, we have a new moon in Sagittarius and the days leading up to the full, to, to, I'm sorry, to the new moon are great days for an emotional, energetic, and philosophic cleansing and really thinking about what I said before about bridging that gap be between what we believe in and how we truly live our life and how we can bring the two to be one as much as possible and stop doing one thing but believing in another. Last note, days that the moon are going, is going to be in some kind of aspect with Pluto and Mars. And these are days that we need to pay more attention to be a bit more distant emotionally and more logic oriented. So we could keep away the drama and keep away unnecessary friction. And the days are the 5th and the 6th of the month, the 12th, the 18th and the 19th and the 25th. I want to thank you for the attention. And I'm here for consultations for lectures, for private lessons, and for courses, and for anything you want to ask. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.